Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be having a look at one of the many integral representations of the Riemann zeta function. In this video, we're going to be having a look at this integral right here, the improper integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 over e to the x minus 1. And our s right here is our complex variable that's going to appear in our zeta function later on. So let's try to evaluate this integral first of all. How can we get started? Well, you see on the denominator right here, we have e to the x minus 1. And I want to somehow turn this into a bit of a geometric series because this is actually quite close, except for a geometric series, we want 1 minus something else. So in order to achieve that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by e to the minus x. And if we do so, we're going to get e to the minus x times s or x to the s minus 1 on the top. And then on the bottom, if we multiply e to the x by e to the minus x, we're going to get 1 because x minus x in the exponent is going to give us 0. Anything to the 0 is exactly 1. And then we're going to have minus still, and then distributing the e to the negative x into this 1 right here, we're going to get e to the negative x. And this is actually quite nice because now I have this e to the negative x right here, and e to the negative x is actually always between 0 and 1 on this interval right here. That means our geometric series will actually converge because our r right here, one minus r, will always be between negative one and one. So we can turn this part into a geometric series now. So we're gonna have now the integral from zero to infinity. We're gonna have e to the minus x times x to the s minus one still. And then we're gonna have a sum running from, I'm gonna choose our index as being k. So k going from zero to infinity. And then for our geometric series, we have this e to the minus x right here, but raised to the kth power, then in dx like so. All right, so now you see we have a power raised to another power. So, and whenever you have this situation right here, you can just multiply the powers together like so, and everything's still fine, okay? So our geometric series right here will actually converge because remember this part right here, this e to the minus x is always between negative one and one. So that means we can kind of pull the sum outside of our integral since this thing converges. So we won't have any problems interchanging the limits there. So if we pull the sum out to the front, we're gonna have the sum running from k equals zero up to infinity of integral from zero to infinity. I'm gonna put this x to the s minus one first. And we're gonna combine these two exponential terms together. And you see we have this negative x that's common on the exponent. And we can actually factor that out. So we're gonna get e to the minus x. And if we factor minus x out, we're gonna get one plus k. Okay, so now we have this integral right here. And if you know your integral representations of some specific functions well enough, you'll know that this kind of looks like the gamma function except we have this weird x times one minus k part that's kind of messing everything up. So what we can do is that we can actually introduce a new substitution. If we let some new variable t be equal to this part only right here without the negative. So t being equal to x times one plus k. We can differentiate both sides now. So we're gonna have dt being equal to, well, derivative of x times some constant is just that constant and then dx. So that means that our dx is equal to one over one plus k times dt. And we can just rearrange for our x right here. We can have x being equal to t over one plus k if we want to. So if we throw all of this stuff back into our integral, we're still gonna have our sum running from k equals zero up to infinity. And now our bounds of our integral. If we plug x equals zero into here, our t will still be zero. So we're still gonna have the integral from zero and plugging infinity into this x right here, our t is also gonna blow up to infinity. So our bounds are preserved and now we have x raised to the s minus one. See, x is exactly t over one plus k. So if we substitute that in, we're gonna get t to the s minus one and then one plus k raised to the s minus one power like so. And then now you have e and now negative x times this thing right here, we said that it was t, so we have e to the negative t. Then dx is exactly one over one plus k times dt. But you see, we also have this one plus k on the denominator right here already. So if we multiply this into here, we're going to add one to this exponent right here. So we're just going to have one plus k to the s power. And then of course our dt at the end is like so. 
All right, so we're actually very close now. Um, this is looking a lot more like a gamma function. So we have this one plus k to the s power, and that's just a constant in terms of t. So let's actually chuck that out to the outside. So we're gonna have now the sum running from k equals zero up to infinity of one over, I'm gonna put like this, k plus one to the s power. And then we have our integral from zero to infinity, of t to the s minus one, e to the minus t and dt. And right here, there it is, that's our gamma function. So now we can rewrite this a little bit. This is now our sum running from k equals zero to infinity of one over k plus one to the s times a gamma. And now this is gamma of s because we have s minus one right here. That's the definition of the gamma function. So we have gamma of s like so. And we can actually simplify this part right here further a little bit because we have this k plus one. And let's say our k plus one, that's gonna turn into a k. So that means when our original k is equal to zero, if we plug zero into this k right here, our new k will actually start at one. So now if we shift the index, we're going to have k going from one to infinity of one over. And now our k plus one turns into k, so we're gonna have k to the s times in gamma of s. And this sum right here, the infinite sum from one to infinity of one over k to the s, that's exactly the Riemann zeta function. So we can simplify this down into zeta of s times gamma of s. And um, that is actually quite cool. So what exactly did we just find right here? We found that our integral at the very start evaluates to the zeta function of s times the gamma function of s. So this is what this integral evaluates to, zeta times gamma of s. And well, if we want an integral representation of the zeta function, we can isolate our zeta right here by dividing both sides by gamma. So if we want zeta of s is equal to one over gamma of s times this integral from zero to infinity, x to the s minus one over e to the x minus one dx. And um, that is quite nice. That is one of the integral representations of our zeta function right here. So yep, hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video and I'll see everyone next time.